everyone and welcome back to this short tutorial from pathology made simple at ilopathology.com in this video i'm going to talk about a very important topic in pathology that is intracellular accumulation of proteins and carbohydrates have you ever wondered what really happens if the proteins and carbohydrates build up in our body so precisely this is what i'm going to explain in the next 10 to 15 minutes we will look into the various causes mechanisms and significance of intracellular accumulations of proteins and carbohydrates so before that let's uh, uh, you know recollect what we have learned in the earlier classes if you are new to this channel i would suggest you to go back to the you know playlist in my channel that is cell injury and adaptations and then go through the videos once so that this video makes sense so what are these accumulations accumulations in the cell can be of normal constituents of cell metabolism which may be due to defects in packaging or transport that is accumulation of fat you know, accumulation of proteins and accumulation of carbohydrates accumulations can also be of metabolites due to various enzyme deficiencies where we need to you know uh, look into various storage disorders and inborn errors of metabolism accumulations can be of normal substances which results due to either acquired or genetic defects one common example we can think of is alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency accumulations can be of pigments because there is no enzymatic mechanism to degrade these pigments and these pigments can be either endogenous pigments or exogenous pigments in the earlier videos i have discussed accumulations of fat we have discussed in detail about fatty liver we have discussed about you know pigment accumulation also so in this video let's look into accumulation of proteins and carbohydrates before that what what are the effects of intracellular accumulations so the effects of accumulations depends upon whether the accumulation is mild or whether the accumulation is severe if the accumulations are mild that does not do any harm you know no damage or no injury if the accumulation is very severe you know that results in damage and or functional compromise let's look into examples of accumulations of proteins these are basically accumulations of proteins within the cells and remember this is less common as compared to that of accumulation of fats so one example the first example is hyaline droplets what are these these are small eosinophilic homogeneous deposits in the proximal tubular epithelial cells so this is a histology of kidney you can easily appreciate the glomerular here these are tubules and these are the eosinophilic homogeneous material present in the cells of the proximal tubules so the causes are any condition where there is increased protein filtration so you can think of all causes of nephrotic syndrome because you know nephrotic syndrome is a condition where there will be massive proteinuria the mechanism of uh, formation of these droplets is basically because basically due to increased reabsorption of these proteins into the proximal tubular epithelial cells and that's why it is also referred to as reabsorption droplets now what is the significance see presence of these droplets in histopathological examination signifies that this patient might be having proteinuria and it is a sign of tubular damage and dysfunction and this accumulation leads to interference with cellular processes it could physically obstruct the tubule as well as you know it can trigger the inflammatory response second accumulation example of accumulation is russell bodies what are these these are eosinophilic Speric, spherical or ovoid intracellular inclusions most commonly they are seen in plasma cells they can also be seen in lymphocytes and very rarely they can be seen in histiocytes epithelial and even endothelial cells it's named after uh, william russell who was a scottish pathologist what are they composed of they are composed of immunoglobulin molecules you know remember these are not normal immunoglobulin molecules these are the ones which are improperly folded are degraded ones the conditions associated are multiple myeloma waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and even chronic infections wherein you find these lots and lots of plasma cells and lymphocytes significance they also interfere with cellular function and in some cases may lead to cell death that's number two number three is mallory bodies what are these these are cytoplasmic hyaline or eosinophilic you know glassy like material inclusions in the hepatocytes named after dr frank burr mallory who was an american pathologist 
it was most commonly you know seen in alcoholic liver disease but now it's also uh, evident that it is found not only in alcoholic liver disease but can also be seen in non alcoholic steatohepatitis that's commonly called as nash it can be seen in primary biliary cirrhosis what they composed of they composed of intermediate filaments which are abnormal and these filaments are made up of protein called leptin significance it can disrupt again like the earlier ones cellular processes impair liver function and promote further inflammation and tissue injury remember presence of malory body is a sign of severe liver disease and thus it's a poor prognostic indicator the fourth accumulation we are, uh, we are uh, learning today is neurofibrillary tangles what are these these are intracellular protein accumulations that are commonly found in neurons of individuals you know particularly in case of alzheimer's disease what are these these are basically abnormal folding and accumulation of a protein called tau these are you know this tau protein is basically a microtubule associated proteins how do they appear they appear as intracellular very darkly stained twisted or elongated structures within the cytoplasm this is what you see and that's a higher magnification view of that the conditions associated as i told you alzheimer's disease it can also be seen in parkinson's disease cortico basal degeneration progressive supranuclear palsy etc and then these are associated with progressive loss of neuronal function and structure thereby leading to cognitive decline and dementia the last one we should uh, remember is accumulation of amyloid so by definition classically amyloid is an extracellular accumulation right but then recent literature says it can be intracellular for example amyloid beta protein that can accumulate both inside the cell as well as outside the cell particularly in case of alzheimer's this is this is a classical extracellular one what what we know of this is the amyloid plaque which is an extracellular accumulation of amyloid beta protein significance again it is also associated with progressive loss of neuronal function and structure they are leading to cognitive decline and dementia i have covered the entire you know uh, uh, topic on amyloidosis in great detail you if you are interested you can just go back and watch those videos as well so these are the four accumulations which we uh, study right highly in droplets mallory bodies neurofibrillary tangles and Russell bodies those were the examples of intracellular accumulation of proteins now moving on to understanding accumulation of carbohydrates any condition which affect carbohydrate metabolism metabolic disorders like diabetes and storage diseases results in accumulation of carbohydrates within the cells the first of the foremost uh, important carbohydrate which we need to uh, remember is glycogen accumulation particularly in cases of poorly controlled diabetes mellitus you know where the glycogen is seen accumulated in the renal tubular epithelium the cardiac muscles and even the beta cells of islet cells of pancreas okay, how do they appear they appear as vacuolated they appear as vacuoles with the, uh, within the cells it's also referred to as vacuolar degeneration this is similar to hydropic uh, change what we see there also you find vacuolar degeneration but then how do we differentiate you just do a special stain uh, by with per iodic acid sieve stain and if it is glycogen it stains intensely pink in color okay the mechanism of accumulation in diabetes is basically because of lack of insulin signaling which leads to decreased glycogen synthesis and increased glycogen breakdown it can also be seen in glycogen storage diseases where there is genetic mutations that affect the enzymes involved in glycogen metabolism okay it can be seen in liver kidney heart skeletal muscle and even brain there also it you know it looks like that of the vacuoles or vacuolar degeneration just like what you saw in the earlier case the significance these patients will have hepatomegaly and then finally liver dysfunction so this is glycogen accumulation so it can also be seen in heart where there will be you know the vacuoles within the heart muscle that is uh, cardiac muscle in this is a special strain where you can easily see this pink material is basically glycogen within these cardiac myocytes so the significance is these patients can have cardiomyopathy and finally cardiac dysfunction the second type of carbohydrate accumulation which we need to understand is glycosaminoglycans what are these these are complex carbohydrates they are also called mucopolysaccharides because th these are important components of the connective tissue such as the cartilage tendon and skin 
and then they are normally broken down and eliminated by lysosomal enzymes so imagine the condition where you have lysosomal storage diseases where there is deficiency of these lysosomal enzymes so whenever there is deficiency of these enzymes the breakdown of glycosaminoglycans do not happen and then they accumulate one common one important example the common example which we can think of is gaucher's disease where there is accumulation of glucosyl ceramide because of deficiency of glucose ribosidase okay this is how it looks in gaucher's disease the glycosaminoglycans in gaucher's disease how do you uh, appreciate them they look or you know they demonstrate the characteristic fibrillary or striated cytoplasm which is reminiscent of the wrinkled tissue paper that's why classically the gaucher cell you know has this wrinkled tissue paper appearance that's a very commonly asked question to you as a graduate wrinkled tissue paper appearance what you see in gaucher's disease so these are the two important or the common examples which i could think of one is glycogen accumulation in tubules glycogen accumulation in kidneys and liver and skeletal muscle and third one glycosaminoglycans accumulation one example i have quoted is gaucher's disease of course there will be many many more examples of carbohydrate accumulations but then for you as the undergraduate student i think these two examples are sufficient so that's all for today's uh, tutorial we have discussed about intracellular accumulations of proteins and carbohydrates few causes the mechanisms and significance of these accumulations thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button if you have any questions to ask please post them in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon because you know you will be notified uh, uh, whenever i upload any new videos and do not forget to share if you find this video useful thank you